By the way, um, at, at the audience out there, I even have some Zedified stuff that Ken has given me, or at least I've gotten access to. So we might actually build something really cool off of this through multiple clouds and maybe some laptops. I'm, I'm, I'm real excited. I'm real excited. All right. Uh, so, yeah, uh, the networking nerd in me is like really, really excited about this stuff because how many times of my life have I spent trying to get this networking to work? <laughs> so uh, I guess I'll switch over to um, a quick diagram so we can just talk about what we've already built and so we can figure out where to go from there. And uh, okay, you should be seeing my whiteboard now. Yep. So Good stuff, we've man. got we've got two Kubernetes clusters. Uh, let's see. We've got JJ up here, and we've got Ken down here. And so the current situation is that these aren't connected at all. Um, I've installed some ZD stuff in mine, but he hasn't installed anything in his yet. Mm -hmm. And so we're the the overall objective here is just to get some stuff talking to each other and this is a little bit of a layout of how that uh, what those un, what those internet connections look like so you've got zd stuff inside a cluster going out through its nat or public ip to the zd fabric and then it finds its way through the zd fabric and the you know, depending on whether you're, you're calling or being called, uh, a ZD piece is going to be creating these links so it can send or receive traffic. So I've got some Kubernetes uh, icons littered about here uh, to illustrate a couple of different things we could do. And we can just do whatever seems the most interesting to get started. I, I, I say we see it work. Yeah, I was going to say like, this is really cool and all, but I'm a skeptic and, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I got, I got to see proof in the pudding. Isn't that the term proof in the pudding? Something Definitely. Like that. All right. Yeah. All right. So the first thing we're going to do then is we're going to install ZD in Kubernetes. So this is what we're going for here. Helm install ZD. And the result will be that the ZD and JJ's cluster will be able to reach out to whatever is installed there. And serve it up to the ZD network. All right, so let's switch over to your screen, JJ, if you don't mind driving for a minute. And sure. we'll have you visit the uh, NetFoundry Helm Charts repo. Uh, do you want to just throw that into the private chat so I yeah. can just bring it up? Um, just to make everyone see this, and I'm sorry, it's too small. Uh, this is just a um, brand new cluster on the IBM cloud, as you can see up here. Um, nothing up my sleeves. This is completely empty. Um, I can bring up the dashboard and all that, but I've purposely done absolutely nothing to this to make sure that um, right we, we are doing this completely empty. So if I go over here and I go ahead and log into the cluster config here, uh, as you can see there, okay, get nodes to make sure that we're actually connected. And then do K. As you can see, I oh, spun this up 25 hours ago. K okay, get pods. There's nothing in the default namespace. And so, okay. I mean, obviously, there's nothing going on here. So that's exactly what we wanted. Uh, oops. If I only knew how to do this in without having to move the screen. All right, so here we go. We got some Helm charts uh, right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, I'll make this a little bit bigger. Go ahead and put this right here, bring that right there. So we'll go ahead and repo add this Helm chart, I'm assuming. Yep. All right, and then search for it just to make sure it's actually there. There you go. There you go. So I'm going to have you first just do the Helm install uh, NetFoundry Hello toy. That's just a toy web app that we'll use that as a as a target for as an example of something like an app running in your cluster that you want to expose to authorized clients. Yeah, all right. That looks pretty good. All right, cool. So Oops. you're you're not able to access that directly right now because you haven't done what would to expose it. We're going to need to install ZD in your cluster also, and okay. so the Helm chart is is um the the Helm install command will be is just like it's shown there, 
um, in the example install a chart, but we're gonna you're gonna need to have that enrollment token file. And that's mm -hmm. in your email. If you'd be able to just download the JWT attachment from your email, and then you, you'll need to reference that okay. as a file with that command. And so that yeah, the, the JWT itself is a part of the enrollment process. That's how we generate that strong identity that I had referred to earlier. So yep. it's just a JSON web token that will go through and basically create a CSR and send that CSR to the server to get signed. And then you'll have a private key on that machine and a certificate that can authenticate you into the network. Yay, PKI handshake. Yep, so we're going through the process now of, of minting the identities. I've done that on the back end and we can, we can explain it later, just sort of conserving some details. But um, the, the CD identity is the thing that's gonna be allowed. In a, to host this particular service. And that service is your toy app that you installed. Oh, of course, this is not working out what I want to do. Oh um, yeah, that, one, that command doesn't like the shell expansion. You can use a home. Feature, or... feature request, feature request. <laughs> yeah. There's a cluster, cluster. There you go. The... Post one and roll. So this, one, yep. so the, these are. Let me go ahead and make that smaller so we can all see it. So this is. So this this JWT is created from the control plane. So if we were using some type of like configuration management or or like Ansible or Chef or whatever, um, we would have to create each of these and then put it into the, the system. So if I decided to spin up a VM. Or something like that. We would have to do this every single time. Is that is that correct? What you probably do is mint a, an API account for NetFoundry or for the controller okay. management API, and give that to Chef, so it could uh, provision the identity and then load it into the configuration. Yeah, that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is ZD supports third-party certificate authorities. So oh, if you oh, wanted yeah. to mint your own certificate authority and then present the, a certificate that was signed by that CA, you're good to mm -hmm. go there too. That would be, nice. that's more of the IoT kind of a way to do it, you know, where you don't want to, you know, hands-off kind of approach, but yeah. yeah. I, I, could, I could see like already the IoT story of like a bunch of Raspberry Pis like in a factory or something that you just like power on and it net boots off of your network and then add like for your local network to the OS and then ZDFI it. And then all of a sudden it shows yep. up on a big like war room screen of like, <laughs> aha, that, 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 that thing's coming up and going. And then, you know, you know how many like hamburgers you're making every hour or something. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. And the, the certificates uh, also, uh, we have some um, basic support for reading the properties of the certificate. So, um, you know, like the common name or, or whatever. I don't remember exactly what we use, but that's how we'll name it back in the control plane. So we have some support for that sort of stuff too. That should be really powerful, if you, especially if you need to do a few hundred thousand of these things. Um, or I don't know. I don't know. I like doing. I like doing the same thing every single time. Just like it's a lot of fun for you. I've actually you're so fortunate seen that you're amused. By Made a long career out of it, huh? <laughs> I've actually seen some engineers where, um, when I used to actually work in an office, I still remember the keystrokes of this one engineer because he did all day. He did the exact. He yeah. didn't. He refused oh, wow. to script it, so I could actually tell what he was doing because he played <laughs> clunk, his, clunk. his key. Yeah, it was like a it was like a keyboard to him. And I was like, I, I get it. But You're in your happy could place. Be a <laughs> yeah, this could be a bash. I mean, come on. Anyway. Okay, All so right. we've, we've uh, that deployed is successful. the host. Yep. That's good. Um, I was hoping done, that you had the customary XKCD ready. You know, the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. I do have gonna, it somewhere. I can like, pull yeah. <laughs> I'm going to switch over to the, the console here so we can uh, use that as a visual aid for what's going on on the back end. And right. so... And while I'm doing this, if you want to um, load up the ZD agent on your laptop from the other email that I sent you last night, that is going to have a basically the client side permission for accessing there, the toy app go. that's running in your web server. Uh, I'm, I'm I connected with a desktop edge here with JJ Lap one, laptop one. Is that right? Yep, you're all set then. Just uh, leave that running in the, and we'll uh, come back to it. 
So okay. here on my screen, um, we can actually see the, your laptop there is registered. So that, l l we're just provisioning identities. Um, they, by themselves, they don't have any permission. It was just so that they can be known by that PKI handshake that Clint was talking about. Uh, crypt strong cryptographic identity, one identity per thing, per device or per process, depending on how you're doing it. In this case, um, the one that you just installed is right here, cluster ZD host. And there's your laptop, and I've assigned using attribute-based access control this hashtag role attribute, work from anywhere, which is basically just saying, you know, you're, you're floating around the world, and we want you to be able to access what you're allowed to access no matter where you're at. So I'm going to click in the left sidebar here over to services, and we're going to create one that describes your little toy server that you installed in your cluster. Hey, it's production. It ain't no toy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, so I'll explain where what I'm doing here. Uh, we're going to give this a name. JJ's extremely production. Nice, nice. I like it. All right. Um, we're just going to give this one a welcome wagon attribute because I've already got a policy set up to grant access to services that have that label. Uh, we're going to leave encryption turned on. Don't need to change any of those defaults. And this is a kind of a fun one because you can invent your own domain names. So this can be um, extreme.server on port 80. And we're going to say that this guy is, we're configuring like the, the terminus here of the service. Like, you know, tell the, uh, tell the network where to bind it so in this clip in this case it'll be hosted by jj cluster zd host all right so now we're describing from the perspective of that identity oh did you have a question yeah and i just want to kind of reiterate for the people who might have just jumped in now um so what we've done is we've installed the zd agent on a kubernetes cluster and then i have installed it on my laptop so we have no egress domains uh, set up right. um, at all. We are going to be doing this all through the control plane of, of ZD. But I want to make sure this is clear. What we are looking at right now is the Net Foundry sugar That's right. on top. That's you right. could still do this with ZD open source, but it's not as, it, it's a little bit more probably texty config there's file two, based. There's actually, no, there are actually two ways you could do it. First way is if you like to text and you like to type, you can use the ZD CLI. So mm -hmm. there is a command line interface straight into what we call the ZD controller. Uh, the second way would be there's a REST interface that the ZD CLI uses. You could use the ZD CLI or the REST interface. And the third way is there's something that we call the ZD administration console, the ZAC. It's like the bare bones no no sugar ui right it, it'll let you do all the things through clicky clickies but um it's not it's not as nice as this so we do have a ui if you want i can i can i'll send you a link that shows you how to do all this through amazon because i, I have just haven't uh generically created a page that basically will take you through actually setting up your first controller your first router as well as the zac and it's like a five minute step like we could i'm sure we could do it right here Absolutely. Oh, that, and to be perfectly that would be clear, awesome. yes. we do want to, we absolutely want to celebrate champion assist with doing this, the self-hosted way. We want to make that convenient and, and great. Um, just like uh, the, the net foundry case just adds like enterprise features and uh, all that other stuff we talked about. So um, I'm going to finish up the service definition here on uh, at the bottom of the form. Uh, this is an important piece because we have to describe the, the app that you just installed from the perspective of the pod, the other pod that you installed. What does that mean? Uh, we're gonna use cluster DNS, uh, Kubernetes DNS conventions. Uh, that is the Kubernetes DNS specification. Uh, the When you did Helm install Hello Toy, that created a cluster service. It's part of the Helm chart. And cluster services are uh, accessible via Kubernetes DNS in a conventional way. So we can actually predict the domain name I believe the, the default metadata name was hello.netfoundry. But while I'm doing this, you can check your, you can say 
kubectl get services and just make sure that the the service that it that it created is in fact hello dash net foundry all right give me two seconds sorry i'm, I'm taking notes over in the background here uh, so uh, just to for for completion's sake i'll bring my chat my video back in yeah here. And you say okay get services mm -hmm. that looks right Hello Dash Net Foundry. Cool. So Hello Dash Net Foundry is the domain name inside your cluster. And we're, it's in the default namespace. So hello dash net foundry dot default dot svc is a standard Kubernetes domain name mm -hmm. in the cluster.local hosted zone. Yep. So that's what I've typed in here. And your your cluster service is listening on port 80 inside your cluster. All right. So yep. I'm gonna yeah, you you match those ports, Ken, but obviously if you don't want to match the ports, you don't need to. You don't have to now. These could be these are arbitrary. We could just make this one 8080 for giggles. Just don't let me forget that I did that. Oh, that 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 apostrophe. I'm past <laughs> got in trouble. Hey, at least it tells you why it failed. That's a very good that is a very good point. That is a very good point. <laughs> how, many, how much of my life I've wasted. Right, by, right. By right. Stupid apostrophe. <laughs> So um, now that now that I've done that, um, we can go and I can check on my tunneler here and see if it has picked up. Yep, looks that looks good. So I should be able to go to HTTP. What was it? Extreme server. Yeah. Eighty eighty. Oh, oh, that's right. Ah, uh, see, I did forget. Mm -hmm. There's nice. a domain name that doesn't exist that we just invented. Uh, basically, just wire up whatever you want from anywhere to anywhere. And let's switch back That's to your amazing. screen now because it should be working on yours as well uh, if you've got that agent running. That's no, this, this is, I don't, I'm a skeptic. I'm a skeptic. All right, hang on. I better That's go make sure here. I granted the right permissions while you're doing that. <laughs> All right, here we go. And then I'll go over here. Don't actually, you know what? I'll do close that and I'll bring up a private window because you know, computers. So extreme dot server port 80, 80. It might oh, make come on. Type. It might make <laughs> you type the HTTP since it's, um, it's not sure if you wanted to search. Well, it's not a top level domain, right? Right, right. It's not a real top dot, level. Dot domain. server is not a TLD. So all right, all right. That's that's really effing cool. <laughs> that's that's that was that's awesome. That so there's a so container cool. running in your cluster that we, you and I both reached. Uh, we just created a very very narrow specific application network and delivered that application to the devices that we authorized. And we did it with attribute-based access control. So we could use automation to span that out to thousands and thousands of endpoints if we want. And we can uh, revoke those on the fly with like endpoint management software integrations and things like that.